Did you know that 27% of Americans made New Year's resolutions for 2020? And of those, 45% of them were to improve their diet. Hello, YouTube friends. Today I'm talking about New Year's resolutions and how to set good nutrition goals for 2022. I am all about goal setting. I absolutely love setting goals for the New Year's. I just really love the feeling of <laughs> setting goals and then being able to track them and accomplish them. So I'm hoping that I can share these tidbits of goal setting tips in the context of nutrition and realistic food goals so that at least our viewers won't be among those whose New Year's resolutions fail by February. So stay tuned if you want to hear the biggest mistakes people make when setting their goals as well as how to actually set realistic goals for yourself. So there are three huge mistakes that I want to address when it comes to setting realistic food goals. The first one is being too restrictive or having an all or nothing mentality. This applies not just to food, actually. This is why the majority of New Year's resolutions fail by February, but it's incredibly true when it comes to food. And I know some of you may be thinking, but Catherine, how am I supposed to set nutrition goals without restricting my diet? And of course, I address this in some of my other videos, but even if you have incredibly strong self-discipline, restriction comes with a cost whether that's sacrificing your innate ability to listen to your hunger cues or an eventual ricochet into the binge restriction cycle, it's just not worth it to commit to a diet that's too restrictive. And I think it's incredibly important to allow the flexibility that our bodies inherently need. So if you thrive off of rule setting, try to make those rules in a very flexible way so that you don't feel like it's too rigid to actually follow in the moment. And when the heat of the moment comes and pressure mounts to break, you won't feel guilty or automatically fail just because you ate a cookie. The next biggest pitfall is using someone else's goals. Whether you're doing this because you're focused on looking like someone else, maybe there's an influencer that you really want to look like, or you're just determined to join a friend or family member in their diet, doing these things brings us further away from understanding our own bodies and being in tune with our own needs. This means that when your body protests to whatever their regimen is, you won't have the flexibility that you need to actually eat the way you need to eat for your own body. And so you fail by not actually adopting your own goals and following someone else's. Because bottom line, nutrition is very personal, so your goals should be very personalized. And the third biggest mistake I think there is, is to simply take on too much at once. This is common for a lot of New Year's goals, but just know that you don't have to change everything at once. It's incredibly important to focus on progress and not perfection so that you can actually grow and build upon your goals instead of trying to take every habit that you have and change it overnight. Lasting change comes slowly. So know that your goals may seem small in comparison to what you've tried in the past, but it's a lot more manageable and a lot more realistic when you take goals little by little and piece by piece and then build on it. And doing it this way actually leads to more lasting change. And of course we want our goals to actually lead to long-term results and not just maybe a short-term fix where we feel better for a little bit and then we move on. So with those mistakes aside, let's talk about how to actually set these realistic goals. Tip number one is to choose personalized goals. If you need inspiration, I recommend watching some of our other videos, how to heal your relationship with food, do you have a healthy relationship with food self-evaluation, or how to balance nutrition with intuitive eating. And I'll link all those right here so you can access them. The reason why I think these videos are good for actually establishing good goals for yourself is because you can evaluate where you're at personally in a way where you can consciously make good nutrition goals that aren't so influenced by other people and what other people are advocating for or what their needs might be. 
So you can really individualize it to your own needs and where you're at in your food journey. The second step is to make an overall goal. Take a moment to imagine where you are with your relationship with food and your nutrition, and then just take a moment to record what that looks like to you. Where do you want to be with these goals in 2023? Because establishing that end destination now will help you make a step-by-step -step roadmap of how to get there. So when you're doing this, you'll want to consider things in your future mindset. So ask your future self, what your mindset is toward food or how has your relationship with food improved by asking these questions then you can determine what your biggest hurdles are toward getting there when you're doing this just be honest with yourself about where you currently are because that will get you best results and also make whatever action steps more realistic and just overall effective so after you've established whatever hurdles or biggest challenges you have to getting to that 2023 goal, identify which hurdles you need to overcome first in order to make the biggest difference possible or make the other goals more achievable. This should just be one or two very manageable things so that you're not trying to take on the entire mountain all at once. But like I said, these should be small and very manageable, but should make the biggest difference for you personally. So just to illustrate what this might look like, if after watching How to Heal Your Relationship with Food, for instance, you determine that one of your biggest challenges is learning to cope with your emotions so that you're not using food as a coping mechanism. Your goal may be to try meditation in place of food as a means of kindly coping with your emotions. After you've established this goal, simultaneously establish a check-in time based on the nature of your goal. This should be a very short time frame, not 2023. Doing a check-in fairly early on will allow you to see if your goal is being effective or actually making the difference that you want it to make. This also allows you to just see what your progress is and if you need to tweak anything in your goal so that it can become more effective for you. So just to continue with what this would look like with the meditation example, I would choose to check in after a month of trying meditation. And just in general, if you're not sure what sort of time frame to set for a check-in, I'd say a month is a fairly good increment of time to check in because it gives you long enough to establish a new habit and also see if it is or isn't working for you. But this gives you the opportunity to troubleshoot. If your goal isn't working, this isn't the time to just abandon all hope and say that your 2023 goal is not attainable. It's simply a time to shake things up a bit and figure out what you need to adjust in order to still get there. So for instance, if meditation isn't your thing, this gives you the opportunity to try other coping mechanisms like talking to a trusted friend about your feelings instead. So many of us feel like we're failing if our original goal just doesn't work for us. But that brings me back to one of the biggest mistakes in the beginning. We need that flexibility instead of that rigid structure or that all or nothing mindset in order to actually reach a goal. It's nearly impossible to know from the onset what you need in order to reach a final destination. So of course we need to allow for some tweaking and modification in the meantime, because otherwise we're just going to stay stuck in the same habits and routines that we've always been in and progress will always feel ridiculously difficult. So if some of your original goals don't end up helping you towards that final destination, treat yourself with kindness because this is perfectly normal, evaluate, adjust and move on. Now, if you feel like your goal has actually led to substantial improvement, this is a great time to review your overall goals again. That way you can determine what your next goals should be. Sometimes you'll find that one goal you originally set to solve one problem may end up getting you over multiple hurdles. So this is a great time to actually check in where you are in reaching your overall goal so you can set a new, very specific goal for yourself again. While you're doing this, of course, feel free to reassess using resources on the channel again, like the self-evaluation video, because as you find yourself progressing, you may find that what you initially thought you needed, you don't anymore, and you'll need to adjust accordingly. So just know that there are 
assessment tools that you can use if you find yourself in that position. When you find that you have made sufficient progress in one area where you feel happy and satisfied with where you're at, then of course you get to set a new goal and repeat the cycle. But don't just drop your habits because you're setting a new goal. Of course, we want to build on all of the habits that we're creating so that we can reach our end destination effectively instead of just like picking up and dropping all of these habits throughout the year. I also highly recommend sitting down and doing an overall goal check-in in July and December or whatever other months might work for you. And I say this because it can be really easy to lose sight of what your overall goal is and you can get lost in some of the smaller goals. So checking in should just give you the opportunity to remind yourself what that overall goal is and also see what progress you've made so far. This can be incredibly encouraging to keep going and just be a really pleasant time to celebrate your successes. Those are all of my master tips for setting realistic goals that are achievable in 2022 for all of your food and nutrition needs. So I hope this video was helpful. Please give it a thumbs up or comment below if it was, and we'll see you next time.